Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today I'm going to show you one of my clocks uh, with a vintage display technology. Uh, it's the what I call the E1T clock because it uses E1T tubes or valves uh, for displaying the time. And the E1T tube uh, is, I think, one of the most interesting and most unique tubes ever made. Its technical designation, it's a beam deflection decade counter tube. Uh, and you can already see why it's called that way. Um, it basically has a, a miniature oscilloscope inside. And um, when you put a pulse onto one of the control inputs, then the little uh, dash that you can see automatically jumps from one to the next position. So uh, always upwards and downwards um, and then from left to right. And when it reaches nine uh, and it gets another pulse, then an, an overflow pulse is generated which can trigger the next tube. So they are uh, cascadable automatically. You don't need any other counter circuitry. And basically that was what it was originally designed for as uh, it was the first tube where you could uh, get an electronic display for a counter. And you might know that engineers, technicians, scientists, they always have desired to get a digital display and not longer reading the needles from analog uh, meters. And I believe this was the first truly digital uh, display technology um, where you at least where you had a uh, display that was emitting light, not a passive display, but an active display. Now we, uh, in a minute, take, we'll take a closer look at the technology inside the tubes. If you want to build one of your own, um, there are two difficulties. First of all, you have to get these tubes. You only get them, of course, used at eBay. I will show you here one from the original uh, manufacturer Philips and the um, tube uh, division of Philips was called Valvo and Valvo the name of course comes from valve so uh, Valvo originally um, made only uh, valves or tubes and uh, what became out of Valvo is now is now called NXP the uh, parts and semiconductor division of Philips. Um, so, and when you uh, buy one, there were, except for Valvo, there, there were a few other manufacturers of this uh, tube, uh, even uh, in the GDR, the German De Democratic Republic or East Germany, these tubes were uh, made under another uh, name or with another code from RFT, which was the big tube factory in the GDR in East Germany. So, and when you get one, um, you never know if it works because you only, uh, everything I've ever seen at eBay were only untested tubes because the problem is uh, to get a circuitry just to test it. And uh, there is an ingenious website by Ronald Decker, who is on the one side a professor for electronics and semiconductor technology in the Netherlands. And he also works for Philips and NXP in the uh, semiconductor um, research. And on his website, he has published, uh, he's also, of course, a fan of old Philips tubes and especially of the E1T. And he uh, invented a very simple tester, which uh, I was one of the first to uh, copy his design, uh, the E1T tester. You only need three voltages for, for them, 15 volt DC, six volts for the heater, um, for the heater in the tubes 
and then and that's a little bit more difficult to get anywhere from 300 volts DC for the anode voltages but with this tester I first uh, bought uh, I think 12 tubes from eBay over a, a period of I think half a year uh, just uh, to be sure that hopefully at least six were working and only then did I discover the E1T tester here and uh, when I tested the tubes uh, all of them were working some a little bit better some a little bit uh, worse uh, you can see for example the brightness of the uh, of the um, of the dash uh, is different in the tubes but anyway now I have a few spare tubes and uh, I'm quite lucky. I will give you the link to, to Ronald Decker's homepage and uh, where he describes the circuitry of the E1T tester. So when you finally uh, got enough uh, tubes for a clock of your own, uh, you still have to get a circuitry to make a working display or a working clock out of it. And there is one guru in the, uh, in the Nixie world and the, in the world of old tubes, and that is Dieter Wächter from Germany. And um, he, we will just in a minute uh, look up at his website where he, he, um, he conceived this uh, clock circuitry. So uh, what you can get from him, it is of course a microcontroller controlled, uh, circuit um, for switching, uh, for taking the time and switching uh, the display and um, well he, anyway he made a perfect circuit uh, for this clock. He doesn't sell uh, finished uh, PCBs or uh, finished clocks but what you can get from him when you ask him um, he, for uh, a few tens of dollars, I think it was something between 30 and 50 dollars, you, um, you get the PCB data, the, the Eagle files, and uh, so you can uh, have a PCB manufacturer manufacture the, you know, two PCBs, one is the power supply, the other is the main uh, PCB with the main circuitry. Uh, and he will uh, sell you the uh, programmed microcontroller. So you only have to buy the additional active and passive components. It's uh, mostly SMD, so you should be experienced in, in SMD soldering. And um, for me, it worked at the first time. Uh, most parts are relatively easy to get. Where I had a little bit difficulty, you might see that the two transformers here, the blue ones, down below, they, they are not really straight fitting and that is because the, the original transformers that Dieter uh, uses I couldn't get anymore so I ha had to take uh, some with uh, the same technical data but with another form factor and so I, I had to somehow fit them into, into the uh, power supply PCB but anyway and the acrylic cases here um, you can also uh, have commercially built. I have a German vendor where you can get custom made acrylic cases. You just have to input the dimension, length, width and height and you will get the six parts then laser cut and you can screw them together by your own. So I think that's uh, quite beautiful. And uh, I think that was it for a description of the E1T clock. You even can read which time we have here in Germany where I'm recording this uh, video. It's 2 o'clock, uh, 40 minutes and uh, 30 seconds at the moment, 40 seconds at the moment. You also can see here a little error. This, this tube here, um, uh, it sometimes displays two uh, dashes at once, so I perhaps will replace that with, with one of my spare tubes. But anyway, I'm quite happy that all of my tubes were working, that I still have a few spares, and that Dieter Wächter created this uh, great circuit and uh, PCB 
where you can build one of your own if you want to. Just I will give you all the links down in the comments or in the description of the video. And now let's go to uh, Dita's homepage and look at his uh, description of the clock and of the E1T tube. So here we are at uh, Dieter's uh, page where he um, has a lot of information about how he developed the clock, also about the technology of the and the history of the E1T clock. And um, here you can see his, uh, his own, uh, his version with, uh, a, with the case he also made by himself. Dieter is not only a master in designing uh, electronics, he's also a master in designing and manufacturing uh, cases. They are really uh, beautiful. Now, let's go on. Um, here we see a lot of different samples of the E1T clock. Uh, you can see the original, of course, came from Philips. And the Philips tube or valve uh, company section was called Valvo. Uh, the, the similarity in valve and Valvo is, of course, not chance, but intended. Um, by the way, out of Valvo uh, grew in the end NXP, the uh, semiconductor division of Philips. And you can see there are um, also some other manufacturers like Mallard, which in the end I think was a, uh, a daughter of uh, Philips. Uh, anyway, even in the GDR in East Germany, a uh, copy of the E1T, which is 100% compatible, was manufactured. Uh, it runs under a different name, I think something like S10 or S I can't remember exactly. Anyway, on uh, Dieter's page, I will give you the link. You can also find all the available uh, data sheets for the E1T and also of a lot of other uh, vintage display technology um, tubes, like uh, especially Nixie tubes. So here he shows a close-up of how the, the uh, little, well, what is it, a streak or a dash, how it uh, looks um, on the kind of oscilloscope uh, screen here. And this is a cutaway drawing from above uh, showing how the beam is formed. You already can see how many electrodes there are. That this was not an easy task to uh, design this uh, tube. Uh, if we go from, from, uh, from the upper side to finally to uh, the, uh, from the lower side to the upper side, we first can see the, uh, the heater where the electrons are generated. Then of course comes the cathode, that's where the beam starts. Uh, we already have here control grids here and uh, what is here with a small letter B um, designated our beam forming electrons. We of course need a beam forming in, in uh, X direction as well as in Y direction because here you can see the X uh, deflection where the beam is deflected from left to right in five steps. And we also have, uh, this, these are probably the Y deflection beams because we have two rows for the numbers uh, one, three, five, seven, nine as the, I think the upper row, let's look it up again. No, zero, two, four, six, eight for the upper row, one, three, five, seven, nine for the lower. Uh, row and of course the the beam has to be deflected uh, in five steps from left to right and then in two different positions up and down and that uh, intermittently so that from each number to the next the beam moves from left to right and up down uh, down up again etc. So very complicated, four different control grids and finally the uh, conductive 
a layer where the fluorescent material is put on, which gives the green color. But it has to be conductive because the charge of the electrons, it has to go somewhere. And it finally is taken off this conductive layer to the uh, anode voltage, so that in the end the, the uh, circuit is closed and otherwise the beams would, uh, the electrons would pile up here and uh, the, the oscilloscope function would immediately uh, stop because then the negative charge would repel all the other electrons. So uh, this has to be, the, or if you see uh, any, any fluorescent uh, tubes like oscilloscope tubes, uh, they always have a conductive fluorescent layer. So here another schematic where you can see a little bit better the principle where the uh, X deflection and the Y deflection is taking place and the uh, slit mask here just to generate a clean little uh, slit like streak or uh, dash. And here you can see the voltage when the uh, tube is counting, or not the voltage, it's the, the anode uh, current. And the special thing I don't know if I already mentioned is, if uh, the counting goes um, from 9 to 0, uh, you get an extra pulse uh, which you can cascade to the next, um, to the next tube. So this tube is really an, a self-counting tube, which means you don't need to have any external counting electronics. You only need a pulse at the uh, input of the first tube and then the output uh, of, of the first tube can be with some passive elements uh, more or less directly be coupled to the next di digit. And well, that, that saved a lot of, uh, a lot of tubes because a, a counter, if you, if you make it in uh, silicon, it has a lot of transistor functions and you can all, uh, well, you could all save uh, the different function, the flip-flops, uh, which would have to be uh, made in tube technology with this single counting and displaying tube. So here we see another uh, cutaway drawing. And let's go on. That's his kind of block, how he designed uh, the E1T clock, starting with a kind of proof of concept. If, if the uh, voltage and the pulses uh, were really working, and then it got a little bit bigger um, with the power electronics. Here you can see the final schematics, which you can uh, freely download. Um, if you want to get the PCB production files and the uh, either a pre-programmed microcontroller or the firmware for the used, I think it's a PIC he used as microcontroller, uh, just write him an email. Um, I will give you the link down below. I'm quite sure that he will still sell them to you, uh, but it's no longer listed in his uh, shop. So then uh, finally how he developed the uh, PCB. As you can see, it's one big PCB which uh, breaks into two parts. The main PCB where the tubes and all the, the microcontroller and the control uh, elements are placed and then the kind of power part with the two power transformers, the AC inlet, etc. And uh, as far as I can remember, he somewhere wrote uh, the uh, PCB as well as the circuit worked without any uh, without any error from the first time. So that's quite an accomplishment uh, uh, to do it right the first time. Here you can see some close-ups of the PCB, the uh, uh, transformer part, and how it's finally all put together. And then how he developed uh, the uh, case, which you cannot 
buy from him you only get the PCB production files and the firmware for the microcontroller and so that was it uh, for me this is one of the most interesting tubes and one of the most interesting projects uh, concerning vintage display uh, technology i hope you like uh, you liked it and that was it for today thanks for watching until next time bye from roger bye from kanka labs <laughs>